carnivores and spiderettes and arachnids, Fiber Spider back again with another tutorial just for you. And today I'm going to show you, yes you, how to spin your own yarn with a drop spindle. And I absolutely love the technique. It's a lot of fun. And once you get the hang of it, it really is not that difficult, but it does take practice naturally. Like anything worthwhile, it takes time, patience, and practice. Now, I will be the first to admit that I am a novice, okay? Uh, I have been spinning comparatively a lot less than I have been crocheting and knitting and so on and so forth a lot less, okay? You know, maybe a year or two tops, but more off than on because other things happen and, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so most of my time has been with knitting and crocheting and that sort of thing. But recently I got the bug, you know, to keep spinning away. And I have been lately and I forgot how much I enjoy it. And I hope <laughs> to show you how you too can spin your own yarn. And it's actually, it's, it's pretty inexpensive, believe it or not, in the grand scheme of things compared to other crafts. And since this is a drop spindle as opposed to a spinning wheel, it is very, very portable, and the spindles themselves are pretty darn inexpensive. In fact, I got this one for about $15 on Amazon. And, you know, there are a lot of different styles and so on and so forth, but for a basic drop spindle, it's going to be probably around under $20, no problem. The fibers, there's a very big range of prices in there, big range. And like I said, I am not by any means an expert. I am very much a novice, but I'm very enthusiastic. And like with all fiber arts, I'm very passionate. And so I'm going to try to give you an essential lowdown on how you can do some spinning of your own. Okay. All right. So first things first, a little bit about the drop spindle itself. There are different styles of drop spindles. This one is called a top whirl drop spindle because the the whirl, this disc, and I'm pretty sure I'm not 100% on the terminology, but I do the best I can. So this is a top whirl because this disc is at the top. Now they have bottom whirls where the disc is at the bottom. Okay, makes sense. Now, personally, I only really have experience using a top whirl. There are other videos on how to use a bottom whirl. Also, similarly, a Turkish spindle, which has sort of prongs sticking out. That too is a bottom whirl. I find that this is pretty easy to work with, me personally. And basically, as you are spinning, you store your spun yarn onto the, the cop. I believe it's C-O-P, the cop. And then when this gets full, then you can you know, transfer it to a, what they call a nitty knotty so that you can set the twist or what you can do, which I find to be very helpful is you can transfer your spun yarn onto a paper towel tube or a, a spool. These I got when I did get a spinning wheel. Ironically enough, I don't use it because I don't like it. Um, personally, you know, I like the control that I have with the drop spindle. It's slower, but you have a lot more control. So six of one, half a dozen of another, really. But I got these along with my spinning wheel. So you can keep it on a, a bobbin, a spool, what have you, or very inexpensively and, you know, going green, you can use a paper towel tube. Very, very easy. Um, so the tube itself, it's free. <laughs> Um, the drop spindles, you know, like I said, they range in price. This one I got for about 15 on Amazon. You have to pay shipping, whatever. Um, 
There are some really cool drop spindles that I've seen on Etsy that are handmade. Very, very cool. Um, I'm going to put a link to this specific one that I got in the description box down below. Now, as far as the fibers, there is, of course, a lot to choose from. I would say before jumping into mega expensive fibers, I would say go simple. You know, um, what I started with, what I started learning with this right here, I've got a nice mass of it. This is wool roving and it's already combed. It's already prepared. It's already cleaned. It's very easy to work with. This specifically is called Heinz 57. I bought this from the Woolery. It's about $15 a pound, which is crazy. Um, crazy good, in my opinion. It's very soft. It's easy to work with. The, the length of the, the hairs, the fibers, very easy to work with, as opposed to something that's like really, really long or really, really short. If you're trying to work with cotton, very, very short, so it's more difficult to work with. For a beginner, I would suggest something like this. Uh, I also have been working with Merino, which is lovely. Uh, the staple length of the fibers is approximately the same, I believe, maybe a little bit shorter, but it is a lot more expensive comparatively, where with the Heinz 57 that I've been using, it's $15 a pound. With the Merino, it's about $15 for four ounces, and I have some of it right here. And this I got from Paradise Fibers. They also have it at the Woolery. Um, it is lovely stuff, and it's pre-dyed so that you don't have to do it yourself. There you go. So just wanted to give you a little bit of a lowdown. Um, you know, before working with, say, alpaca, or angora or mohair, I would suggest working with perhaps something like a Heinz 57, or I hear that Coria Dale was nice to work with. Um, you know, there are options, and by no means am I the end all be all. I would say do some research as far as price versus ease versus quantity versus quality, etc. etc. You know, I would do a little bit of research first see what works with your price range. Definitely. And um, yeah, okay. So things that you will need, you will need a drop spindle, of course. Um, if you want to store your fiber, I would say, yes, you're going to need a tube of some sort. Also, when you are ready to what they call setting the spin, setting the twist, in your fiber so that you can then work with it, you are going to need what is called a nitty knotty, which is basically a framework. Picture a, a bar with another bar and then another bar, sort of like an H shape in three-dimensional form. And that you wrap the yarn around it and then you soak it in water to set the twist. And that way when it's dry, which takes a little time. When it's dry, you can then actually work with the yarn. Or you can also ply the yarn and create different visuals and also uh, to make the yarn, of course, thicker and also a little bit stronger. I know I'm giving a lot of information, I understand, but I'm, I'm trying to give a sort of cursory kind of intro on how to spin your yarn. And I know that I'm yammering on a lot. I know, I know, but I'm trying to give you a lot of information. You know, I'm trying to be fairly thorough. Okay, so you're gonna need this, the drop spindle. You're going to need some sort of tube. Eventually, not right away, you are going to need a nitty knotty. You can make that with PVC piping. Uh, I bought mine off of Etsy, which is made out of PVC piping. Uh, you probably aren't going to want a nitty knotty that's made out of wood because you have to soak it and you don't want it to warp. That's my personal opinion on that. And that's pretty much all you're actually going to need, actually. Um, so without further ado, let's 
get started. Okay, finally. Da -da -da -da. Okie dokie. So we have ourselves our spindle. Now, there are a whole bunch of different ways on how to get the fiber on here, okay? Um, some people, they like to take the fiber that they're going to be working with and make what is called a leader out of the, the fiber that they're going to be actually spinning. Me, I have something else in mind, which I have found to be considerably easier. Um, and it I've been doing this pretty much from the get-go, and it totally works. Now, what I do, I have... This is regular acrylic yarn. In fact, the, I think this is Red Heart Super Saver. And what I did was I took a length and I created a little knot. So I have a loop. Okay. Very easy. And also, I would strongly suggest don't use wool yarn to make your, your temporary leader. Don't use wool. Use acrylic. Otherwise, it might go and sort of squinch together. So what you're going to want to do is take your loop, okay, and your spindle, and then we are going to attach this loop, and you need a loop, okay? So basically you're going to take your loop, like so, I'm behind here, and I'm going to feed the long end through this short little loop right here, sort of grab that, grab the, the long, and then boom. Okay, sort of like when you're tying tassels onto something. And there you go. This is my leader. Take me to your leader. <laughs> I know, I'm cheesy. I know. But this way, what you can do is uh, you then take your, your leader and then you put it into the little notch of your your whorl, that little line there, put it into your notch, and then wrap it around, and then spin. And then you're going to get a whole bunch of twist into your leader. And then that way, when you put your fiber into that loop, it'll grab right on. Very very simple, and there are no there's no knots. There there is no there are no knots, so it will be able to come out very very easily. Very simple. So this is how I get started as far as a leader. Okay, before we actually attach the fiber into the leader, I'm going to show you how to prepare the fiber and draft it out a bit so that it will be that much easier to work with. Okay. Alrighty, so when you have your fiber, me, I, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to use this. This is Malabrigo. It's a merino wool. It is lovely stuff. I wouldn't recommend starting with this per se. Um, I would recommend perhaps, you know, like the Heinz 57 or something a little bit cheaper, but for the sake of boldness of color so that you can see it easier. That's why I chose this for this particular demonstration. Now, a lot of the time it will come in a braid. Well, looks a little alien, right? Well, it comes apart like this, okay? And then you have your two ends. And basically what you're going to want to do is undo the braid. You might want to undo the whole thing or not the whole thing. It's up to you. It depends on where you want to go with the color and it, what you want to do with the color way. So basically, I'm just taking the loop out of the loop and sort of un, undoing it. See? It's one big twisted loop. The other way that you can do it is from the opposite end, where you actually have the the two ends. And this isn't felted. It's very compacted, but it's not felted. And that is why we are going to need to do some drafting in order to be able to work with this, because you can't work with this fiber as is. 
much too difficult. You know, you really need to get some air in there and you need to seriously fluff it out. Mm. So after you unbraid your braid and you can really get an idea of, oh my goshness, look at all the colors. Isn't that gorgeous? Ah, I could die, but I'm not going to because I have to finish this tutorial. So what you're going to want to do is to break off a piece of this. Now, me personally, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this folded in half because I want to approximately figure out how much is half. And then I want to put half onto a paper towel tube and then spin the other half and put that onto a paper towel tube. And then I want to ply the two halves together. That's me personally. So this is my half point. Now, yeah, try, <laughs> try, try to rip this. You're gonna have a bit of an issue. So what you need to do first is actually to separate, separate the, the fiber a bit. It's like all that colors in there. It's so gorgeous. So separate it out a bit. Now this is going to weaken the bond, if you will. And that's what you want in this case. You want it to be weakened so that you can actually tear it apart. That's a good thing in this case. And so let's see, can I do this now? He-Man, I am not. Okay. Let's try. There we go. And then more. Yeah. Was it Mr. Universe? I am not. You know, Mr. Atlas? No. No, afraid not. Um, Jack LaLanne? No. <laughs> I know. If any of you make memes of me making that face, I'm going to be upset. There we go. Okay, so now... My fiber has been divided in half. Good. Okay. I know. Like five minutes of me doing that, right? So now I have two halves of one braid. One half I'm going to store away and the other half I'm actually going to work with. Now, we're still not done yet, folks, because what we need to do is we need to take this and we need to thin the flock, no pun intended. Um, so what we need to do is, you know, this is way too much to work with because as you can see, this is a lot of fiber. So what you want to do is to pull off a portion of it. Now, it's actually easier if you start in the middle here somewhere in the middle, and then pull off a little bit like this, separate it, and then pull down and separate it, and then just separate the rest of it, like so. And it just, this, this way, it tears very, very easy, as you can see. Very, very simple. Okay, so then... We're not done yet. No, there's a lot of steps and prepping and so on and so forth. Now, I've got a crazy long length here. You do not need this much, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take approximately an arm's length, okay? Approximately an arm's length. And I'm going to, again, separate it like so so that I'll be able to rip it that much easier. See, even that, you know, it, it really holds itself together, okay? Okay, so, and now we have even more prepping to do. It's basically divide and conquer. That's, that's how we do this. Now you can see it's all fluffed. That's a good thing. But this is very compacted together. 
So what we need to do is it's called pre-drafting essentially. Now we're not going to pull it this way. We're going to separate it like this, pulling it apart widthwise, not lengthwise. We're going to pull it apart widthwise to get some air and some space in there. And I wouldn't say, you know, draft it so much that it's like incomprehensible, but, you know, draft it out so that there is a lot more air in there and so that you can work with the fibers that much easier. You know, trust me, tr trust me, um, it makes it a lot, a lot easier. In fact, I could have probably split this uh, in half again lengthwise. Um, in order to start, which actually I might do because there's a lot of fiber here. So why not? See, I can do that. And this is more manageable. You know, you don't want to have so much to deal with that it becomes unmanageable and unruly. Then it's, it's not as much fun to work with, is it? So I'm going to foof out the rest. See, in this nice it's foofed. It's foofed. Compared to what we started with, it's foofed. Okay, so I'm going to get the rest of this ready, and then I'm going to show you finally <laughs> how to start. Okay. Okay, here we go. All right, so I already have my leader attached. Now, something that you want to keep very much in mind is which way you are spinning your drop spindle. Press, personally, I prefer to give it a clockwise spin. So I'm spinning it like this, clockwise spin um, for your initial ply, um, you know, for your single plies. When you are plying two together, two plies together, then you go counterclockwise or uh, anti-clockwise and then you can ply the two together. Now, I just trapped my little poor finger in here. I need to open that up just a little bit, that loop that we have here. Open that up a little bit. And so we've got a lot of twist in here, which is good. That's what we want, okay? And some people also do a half hitch onto the hook. I don't think it's necessary because it's just yet another step. But, you know, just having your yarn into that hook, twisting it clockwise, boom, and then, because this is a lot to work with here. So I'm going to unhook it and then go down and I'm going to start wrapping. Just hold on to that knot real quick. I'm just gonna start wrapping like so and then hook it back into the notch. See, that's a that's much more easy to work with right there. So now we've got the twist, like so. We have our leader, and now finally we can take our foofed out, very nicely foofed out fiber, and stick the the end foof into the loop like so. Okay, we've got the the fiber in that loop and there we go. Then, okay, this is called park and draft. Okay, I've parked my spindle underneath my arm, so now we need to draft a little bit. Now the drafting, it, like I said, it takes practice, yes. Now, if I were to let go of, this is my right hand, if I were to let go, all of a sudden, the twist would shoot up this fiber. Well, there's a lot of fiber here. And if I let go right now, 
it's going to be very, very thick. So what I want to do is I want to thin it out some. So basically it's a matter of pulling the fiber like so, and you will get a feel for it over time. So you can see how much fiber we have going on here. You, know, you can see my thumb through it. You know, it's, it's very thin. And so you draft out some fiber and then you let go of your right hand and then you pinch down with your left and, <laughs> and it, it created a little bit of a, a tweed going on here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to then pinch with my right again. And now that that is secure, I'm going to create more twist. Okay. Because twist is like glue when it comes to doing this. Now I'm going to, again, park it under, you know, in between the, the crook of my, my leg and, you know, on the backside of my knee here. And so it's parked there which I find in this instance a lot easier. So it's parked. I've got some twist. Now I'm going to draft out some more, pinch, then let go. And then draft out some more fiber, pinch, let go. Draft out some more, pinch, let go. Now this is also referred to as inchworming. Very good reason for that because you're going a very small distance at a time, granted, but you have a lot more control, which I like. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to continue to wrap a little bit more onto the, the dowel there and then create some more spin like so. And it'll slow down when there's too much spin. You know, it will slow down to be sure. Now I'm going to park once again. And we are going to get up close and personal once again. And I'm going to show you in closer detail what it is that I'm doing. Okay. All right, so you can see my mouth moving, but not the rest of me, but that's okay. So I put the twist into my my strand there, and I, I'm pinching down here. You don't need a death grip. I have a tendency of using one, but you don't need a death grip. It's really not going to go anywhere. And then you draft out your fiber, like so, and then you pinch and then let go and then pinch where you left off draft out some more pinch and let go draft out some more and you will get a feel for how far you can draft out your fiber before it'll break you want to be very careful um, that you don't draft out too far. Otherwise, you're going to end up with a lonely little fluff and you're going to have to join your yarn, which it's not the end of the world by any means and you're going to have to anyway because this ends here, right? Well, you're going to have to add more eventually, but it's easier in the beginning if you don't have to do it quite so often but it is a skill that you are going to have to acquire over time. Now, isn't that cool? It's creating little stripes on there already because of the way that I ripped off the fiber, as luck would have it. So then when you have enough, you then check to see, is there enough twist in order for your yarn to hold itself together? So what I do is I hold my thumb here, so this isn't going anywhere, and I'm holding on to this and sort of bring them together a little bit. And oh, look, check that out. That is actually a good sign because you need some twist in your fiber. Otherwise, it will fall apart. Okay, now, yes, this looks like a hot mess right now, but 
when you set the twist later on the nitty naughty, it sort of evens itself out and the twist will disperse itself so that when it's no longer contained on a spool or a spindle, the twist is not going to go anywhere. So I have a good amount of twists. So again, undo it from my hook, wrap it on to my cop here, and then back into the little notch there around the hook and add some more spin. There you go. And so you just keep doing this over and over and over. Now, granted, um, I am doing this in a fairly awkward way because typically what I do is I sit in a chair or on the edge of my bed and I spin like that. And then I hold the spindle in between my knees um, makes it a lot easier, believe you me, than doing it like this. But I really wanted to show you in a nice close-up fashion so that you could really see what it is that I'm doing. And yes, it takes practice. I will be the first to say that. It does take practice. Now, this is just one method of many of how you can do your drafting. So this is what I believe is called inchworming. You know, it's a, a back drafting, okay? Backwards drafting. Now, do I have enough spin? Enough twist? Yes, good. And it's good to check. You know, you don't want to have so much that it just sort of collapses in on itself, but you do need some spin on there. Definitely. Um, you know, there are also people who will literally drop their spindles and they're standing up and they let it fall down and they're plying as it's spinning. Personally, that is not for me, you know, um, because I like to have more control. I would much rather do the slow and steady method and I find it to be a lot more meditative and I don't feel like I'm fighting. And see, we're just parking and drafting, doing our little inchworm thing. All right, and I didn't check it. Is it good? Yep, it's good, it's good. And so you just keep wrapping it around and you wanna go, you wanna travel downwards eventually. Um, and you just keep going. It's, it's, it's that easy, ultimately, it's that easy. So actually what I'm gonna do, so that you can get a better idea as to what I am talking about with how I actually go about doing this in an easier fashion, um, as opposed to in my current setup, I'm gonna show you how I do it normally. There's nothing normal about me, but I'm going to show you how I do it normally so that you can see how it does actually go faster than what I've been doing it with practice. All right, so I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay. All righty. So what I wanted to show you is this is how I normally do it um, because, yes, it was a little bit fiddly before, but it was more of a close-up kind of deal. So Still got my, my spindle here, and so I'm going to... Also, another thing that you really want to be aware of is make sure that your fiber is well out of the way. Otherwise, if it gets into the yarn as it's spinning, look out. It will create a tangled mess from hell. <laughs> so I got the spin in there. Now I'm keeping it in between my knees, okay? And then it's a matter of, okay, I know this is hard to see, but I'm grabbing again with my right hand. And then I'm gonna draft with my left hand. And actually I'm on tippy toe right now. Okay, once you get it started, okay, I got a bit of a draft going. 
and then let go, and then draft, and let go, draft, let go, draft, let go, draft, let go, and then after a bit, you want to give it a little bit more spin. Now, the reason why I like to do this sitting on the edge of a bed or in a chair is because I go, I go way up, <laughs> I go high. And so draft out some more, pinch, let go, draft up some more, pinch, let go. Also, when you're letting go, give it a little, little twist flick there to encourage the spin to go up a little. Okay, and I'm going to keep going, actually. Just add a bit more spin because you want to make sure that there's enough spin or twist in your fiber as you're going up. Otherwise, it will come apart. It will dissolve. Um, and that's no fun. And also just sort of work the spin up. And I love that. It's like bowstring. And so I'm going to keep going up, adding more of this drafting and pulling and going up, up, up. And I even go well over my head, actually, because that way, ultimately, it goes a lot faster than if you were parking it underneath your arm. And, oh, see, almost got caught in there. And then, check this out. Oop. Here we go. See, it's still in my hook, holding it with my thumb. How's it look? All right, so we've got a couple of them. That's actually, that's fine. So we've got all this single ply, which is awesome. And then, We'll wrap it around our dowel. And then go back up. And then eventually back into the notch. And then I like to wrap it around a couple times. And then when I'm done, I just like to sort of wrap it around the shaft of the spindle and there you go <laughs> so basically what you do is you just keep adding more and more twist keep drafting out and keep you know having more and more yarn onto your spindle and then eventually it will fill up and i'm going to show you what to do next okay Alrighty, so when your cup is filled, now personally, this is a personal preference. I don't like to fill it all the way up because it creates a lot of weight on your spindle. So after you do a good amount, what I like to do is I like to transfer my, my yarn, if you will. This is a single ply that I have here. I like to transfer my yarn onto a tube. And to do that, also, when you are fin when you're finishing um, one of your single plies, I would strongly advise do not twist it, twist it, and make it completely compacted at the very end. Leave it, leave it fluffy at the end. I would very much recommend that because it makes it much easier to join later, believe you me. So when you're ready, get a, a tube, you know, either paper towel or a toilet 
roll and basically just hold it down and start to wrap your yarn around the tube. Very simple. And what I would recommend is to go back and forth, not focusing too much in one particular area of the tube, you know, going back and forth, having an even distribution of the fiber along the tube, and actually probably help if I put my fingers in there. There we go. And so I have a nice even distribution. Roll out some more. And there you go. And so this is, of course, how you can store your yarn um, if you're not ready to set the spin and you want to make a longer length of your fiber. Now, something else that you can do, which I was intimating before, is that if you want to make it into a longer length and you already have some stored up on a tube, well, you can do that too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll this back onto my spindle here, and I'm going to show you how you can join onto some pre-existing fiber. That way you can have a nice really long length to work with at a later point. Alrighty, so I'm going to show you how to do that. Alrighty, so if you already have a whole bunch already saved up onto a tube, again, making sure that your end is nice and foofy. Yes, nice and foof, because you need these ends to be splayed out. Otherwise, they're not going to lock together to your current working yarn. All right, so make sure you got the foof going on there, okay? And so I'm going to roll out just a little bit like so. So I've got, this is attached to my big tube. Okay. So I got this. Then I have my spindle. Now what you're going to want to do is when you are ready to attach the two, you are going to want to add a healthy amount of twist to what you have on here so that the twist is going to travel up here. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's going to travel from here and into the next fiber and it's going to lock the two together. And that's very important. Um, this does take practice. Like everything else, it takes practice. And when you first start your joins are not going to be seamless, okay? Mine are hardly seamless, okay? And I've been doing this a while, but I could always use some more practice. All right, so I'm going to just park my spindle under my arm here so that you can see a little bit better what I am doing. And actually, I'm going to get up close and personal here. Woo! Sorry. You know... Excuse my weird camera work here. Okay, so we've got ourselves foofed out a little bit here. Okay, so we're we're foofy. And then we have the the pre-existing foof going on here. And then what you want to do is to line up your pre-existing foof with your new foof. Okay. And lay them one on top of each other like this. Now this is a lot easier to do than to film, trust me. But so I'm lining up my two ends as such and stretching this one out and stretching this one out a little bit. And in fact, I could stretch it out a little bit more. There we go. And then Get the the twist is stored in here and it's going to go across. Ooh, look at that. And it's going to continue. It joined and actually not that bad considering that this is a very awkward way 
to do it and film it. But look, da -da -da -da, it's actually joined. And it's pretty seamless. I mean, not 100%, no, but it's pretty seamless. Gosh darn it. And so I'm just going to add a bit more spin, a bit more twist. And now I'm parking it in the, the crook of my leg because I'm sitting akimbo, I believe is the term. And so it's it's all joined. Yes, it is. It is all joined. Pretty, pretty spiffy, don't you think? So now I can take what I have here and I can roll it onto my tube. Yes. Okay, now the, <laughs> the tube that I had here, uh, it rolled off the bed and onto the floor. And so I had to retrieve that. But now, as you can see, it is completely joined. Um, and yes, you saw me actually do it. So it is completely joined. So yeah, this is probably going to be really weird for my the focus on my, my camera here. But basically, now all you have to do is just wrap all of this work from your spindle onto your tube. And then you can begin anew with some more fiber and continue a nice long length. And it, there you go. You just keep going and going and going. It's, you know, I don't want to say it's that easy, but it's that basic as far as, you know, what you need to do. Um, as far as it being easy, well, when you get the hang of it, it's easy. Um, or at least simple enough to keep doing. But yes, it does take practice. You know, that, that join that I just did, I'm actually very pleased with it because there wasn't a big, what they call a, a slub. And a slub is where you have a nice even thickness, and then all of a sudden there's just sort of like this, this sort of chunky fat point uh, just out of nowhere, um, sort of like a a boa constrictor swallowing something. It's like, yep, you can see it. It's there. Um, and uh, so it does take practice and it does take time and it does take effort, but it is, in my opinion, it is so worth it. But be patient. Definitely be patient with yourself. Remember to breathe. Remember to practice and be patient with yourself. And it's not a contest. Now, this in particular, it is an exercise in patience because it does take a long time to actually make something. Now, granted, you, working with a spinning wheel, it goes a lot faster. Yes, a lot faster. But spinning wheels, they are a lot more expensive. Uh, they are at least a couple hundred dollars uh, for the cheaper models, they can be thousands for the more expensive models. Yes, this, however, it's really small. It's very affordable. You can even make your own using a dowel, a couple of CDs, a teacup hook, and some rubber bands. And that was actually the first one that I ever made. I followed a tutorial on how to make them. Um, and that was the first one that I ever made because I'm like, hmm, this sounds interesting. It's not very stable, but it's not a bad way to get started. However, you are still going to need fiber. You know, that, that's just a given. Um, so I am going to continue rapidly wrap, wrap, wrapping this. And uh, we are going to just keep doing this. And then I'm going to start some new stuff. Okay. <laughs> Anywho, I digress. Okay, so that is a basic understanding of how you can spin your own yarn with a drop spindle. Now, I'm going to stress this again. Yes, it takes practice. It takes time. It takes a lot of deep breathing um, in order to get the hang of this. And by no means am I an expert. I will never say that about this or any other crafting thing that I ever do. I am not an expert. Um... I'm still, in my opinion, very much a novice, but 
you ultimately, I would say, you get out of it what you put into it, just like with any other sort of fiber art, whether it's crocheting or knitting, practice, practice, practice. I would say, again, start with a fiber that is reasonably priced. Start with a reasonably priced spindle to see, is this something that you want to get into? If so, I would say, hey, full steam ahead, go for it, have some fun, because I love it. It's very meditative, and it there's something magical about making your own yarn. It's just, ah, uh, and it's perfect for me because fiber spider, you know, it, just think about it. It's like squidgy. Um, so I really enjoy doing this, and I hope that I was able to impart to you how you can do it yourself. Now, there are other elements to this particular craft. There is also setting the twist when you have a whole bunch ready to go. Um, there's also plying as well, taking two strands and then twisting them together in order to create a plied yarn, which again, it's thicker, it's a little bit stronger. And of course, if you're using different colors, it can look really quite dazzling. So I am thinking about doing tutorials on how to do that as well. Depending, I guess, on how well this did for you guys, I don't know. Um, also, like I said, there are a lot of other spinning tutorials out there. I would say, sure, check them out by all means. I am not the end all be all, but I am very passionate about my fibers and I wanted to share that passion with you guys because I always love sharing new things with you. So if you liked this video, if you found it interesting or informative, please hit that like button, show your support. I appreciate your appreciation in every form and uh, maybe give it a try. Definitely. And uh, also, like I said, I'm going to put links to the various things, the, the spindle that I got. I don't know if there are still any in stock, but the spindle, um, where you can find fiber, um, good stuff all around. So listen, until next time, I want all of you to stay inspired, stay caffeinated, and stay spinning. Yes or stitching, whichever the case may be, or stay spinning so that you can stay stitching. <laughs> so listen, guys, I love you, and I will see you in my next video. Bye for now.